In any downtown area, you're likely to find evidence of street artists making their mark. Some call it vandalism, some find it beautiful, but how often can you call it useful? In 2001, a local LA artist, after two years of planning and prep, snuck onto a large overhead signage structure over a busy freeway in broad daylight and added his art to the sign. This one act of vandalism was so subtle, so detailed, and so useful, it stayed in place for eight years. Let me tell you the story about the man who did what Caltrans couldn't, the guerrilla public servant Richard Ankrum. Now, you've all heard stories about how bad LA traffic is, or at least you've heard Californians complain about how bad LA traffic is. And while that's partly caused by overcrowding, a lack of public transport, and Angelinos not knowing how to drive, a lot of it comes from when those freeways were originally constructed. California's interstates were built and maintained by the California Department of Transportation, or Caltrans, and 110 was one of their first projects. Oh, actually, it's in California, so the 110. The 110 was first opened in 1940 as the Arroyo Seco Parkway. It wound from Pasadena to San Pedro, cutting through the heart of downtown LA. At the time, it was hailed as a shining example of a modern freeway, but fast forward about 60 years and the story changes a bit. Caltrans realized freeways needed certain things, like shoulders, for example. The Arroyo Seco Parkway was designed to be, well, a parkway. It was built for 40 mile an hour road speeds, which is what most vehicles were doing at the time. It had near 90 degree off ramps and microscopic on ramps with stop signs in certain areas. And because it was built right along the Arroyo Seco River, it couldn't be widened as the city grew. Luckily, the 110 is not the only way into Los Angeles. The 5, the 101, the 10 all funnel commuters into the downtown area but because the 110 was there first, it sits in the prime spot. This means it had to have on-ramps and off-ramps for each of these freeways added throughout the years in the space of about four miles. I think the worst thing about this is that there's no way to unfuck the downtown merges. This is just set in stone. Nowadays, freeway signage is almost superfluous. GPS apps, built-in navigation, and the trust we put in strangers from Uber have made them little more than a relic of the past. But in the Y2K era, people relied on road signs and needed them to be accurate. So you can imagine how frustrated you'd be if you were road tripping to Six Flags, four kids in the back of your Ford Expedition, Pokemon soundtrack blaring, driving down the 110, looking for which lane you needed to be in to get on the I-5 North, and the sign just wasn't there. The overhead sign or gantry at mile marker 231 had lanes marked for the 101, the 5 South, and staying on the 110, but it made no mention of the tiny two-lane exit on the far left side that would put you onto California's largest freeway in less than two miles. Here we are in the tunnels of the 110, just north of downtown. We are about to come up to the 5 North exits. It is a very, very tight left-hand exit that just comes up very abruptly at the end of this tunnel right here. And if you are not prepared for it, there it goes. Missed it. Every day, people were missing their exit, or worse, cutting across faster lanes of traffic to make it at the very last minute. It's unclear if anyone was actually complaining to Caltrans about this and being ignored, or if it was just one of those, you know, everyday annoyances that people felt they had to live with. But one man wasn't gonna let it stand any longer. He became the hero we needed and took matters into his own hands. Richard Ankrum is a contemporary artist and sign painter who was living south of Los Angeles in Orange County back in 2001. After falling prey to the freeway signs misleading layout one morning, he began to notice just how many people did as well. Luckily, Ankrum had the skills, the stubbornness, and the free time to do something about it. At first, it was just a funny little idea that he talked about with friends, getting up on that gantry and fixing the sign. But eventually, Ankrum went into full planning mode. And that plan wasn't just to get up there with a few cans of spray paint and graffiti on a fix. Ankrum was a sign maker by trade, so the level of detail he went into was unlike anything else. Ankrum visited other overpasses with a measuring tape to get accurate sizing. He took color swatches to other signs in order to match the Caltrans standard perfectly. 
as a skilled sign painter, Ankrum even hand-painted the exact Caltrans standard font onto his masterpiece. He even sourced reflectors from the same distributor that Caltrans used. After three months of work, Ankrum had a sign that matched the existing gantry signs perfectly, and he even added some patina to help match the surrounding paint. But now came the tricky part, actually getting the sign up there. Just like the making of the sign, Ankrum was meticulous in his approach to actually installing it. He got a high-vis vest and a hard hat from a DIY store, and even put a fake contracting business logo on the side of his truck just to make sure no one was suspicious. And honestly, why would they be? Everything he did seemed to be the protocol as far as freeway goers were concerned. Ankrum used the guardrails on the gantry and even had a guide to properly align the signs to perfect spec. It all looked pretty legit. And in case I didn't mention, the reason why we know the process looks so convincing is that Ankrum and his team filmed the whole thing. They not only documented the process of making the sign, but they had cameras stationed all around it while it was being installed. Ankrum eventually released all this footage as a 10 minute documentary and it is worth a watch. It's a little scary and I don't really know why, but if you like your documentaries with a little bit of a David Lynch vibe, you should check it out. I have taken it upon myself to manufacture and install these missing guide signs. And if you're thinking, why would someone put all that effort into something so trivial? Didn't this guy have bigger things to worry about? Not really. This was the peak of post-Cold War, pre-9-11 America, arguably the most stable period in U.S. history. The world as it was at the end of the 20th century. And it was also a time when Americans were a lot less concerned with security. The installed sign was so convincing that for eight months, no one even knew there was anything different about it. Drivers saw it as a much needed, much welcomed improvement, and Caltrans didn't seem to be reacting at all. Ankrum had completely gotten away with it. On one side, that's the mark of a perfectly executed plan. But like any mastermind, Ankrum wanted to get caught just a little bit. In 2002, Ankrum leaked the story to a local newspaper, and once they broke the story, the media circus began. So was it your idea to, to create and deploy a sign of your own? Yes. And you told your mom about this. What'd she think? She thought I was out of my mind. <laughs> of course, reporters wanted to hear from Ankrum about his motives and mindset, but they also wanted to hear from Caltrans about how they felt about a private citizen doing their job for them. We feel he had a good idea. And in fact, we're planning to institute it. Mr. Ancrom's activity was very well executed, very well thought out. However, there is a safety issue concerned, and it's very important that such work be done under the guidance or by our maintenance forces. Eventually, Caltrans did replace the original sign with the new one that you can see behind me. But do you know how long it took them? Eight years. Now, whether that's because Ankrum's work was just that good or Caltrans is just that inefficient, I guess we'll never know. But as you can see, they did keep Ankrum's addition in pretty much the exact same spot. Ankrum didn't leave it at that, though. His mini documentary, Guerrilla Public Service, went to over a dozen film festivals over the next four years. And according to him, there are other similarly helpful works of his out there that he's kept quiet. The Statue of Limitations is a real thing. Listen, we've all looked around at our surroundings and seen things that need fixing, but rarely do any of us actually do anything about them. Now, I'm not saying you should climb up onto your nearest street sign. In fact, I'm saying you shouldn't do that because it's illegal, but it is certainly worth acknowledging and appreciating the work of a vigilante roadwork specialist like Richard Ankrum. That's it for me this time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in two weeks. Let's go before we get a ticket.